Hello everyone, this is Lisa from the Gingerbread Prints. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue to make the uh, journal. Last time we finished gluing the spine, front and the covers to the cardboard. So today we're going to prepare the journal pages and uh, print out all the pages. Some uh, of the pages need to be printed double-sided. And um, here I have already printed all the pages and all the sheets. I use different papers for different images. For example, these pockets and the envelopes, I'm using 20 pound copy, regular copy paper to print them out. This fussy cut sheets. I also use 20 pound copy paper to print them out. <clears throat> For the tags and uh, bookmarks, I use 67 pounds cardstock to print them out. This is the Paper for the covers, I print two of these images. And for these images, I print them on 20 pound regular copy paper. These images are absolutely beautiful. They're inspired by 1920s period, period, period of time, the famous painter John Waterhouse. We can use the, these uh, full sheet images as the center page of each signature. I include five full sheet images in this printable kit. And these are the journal pages. I print these uh, images double sided. I absolutely love these images. They're extremely beautiful. I have different background designs. I print them on different pages. So when I put the signature together, I'll mix match to um, add these to the pages. These are two sheets of the background paper additional we can use these for journaling. Now, after print all these pages and the sheets out, I will need to trim them to the size of the journal covers. I will trim them to the size uh, one eighth of inch smaller than the covers. For trimming, I trim Usually I trim five sheets at a time using my heavy duty trimmer. I always use this trimmer to trim my pages. Clamp the sheets together prevent them from shifting around when cutting. Trim the height seven and three quarter inches high. 
I'm going to trim this side, top side down a little bit, and then I'm going to trim this side down a little bit, make it seven and three quarter inches. I'm going to trim the rest of the pages off the camera. I'll come back later. So I have finished cutting all the papers out, including all the pages, all the center images. background papers. I didn't cut the fussy cut images because I'm going to use these images later on when I decorate the journal. So I'm going to leave this for later. And I also cut out all the ephemera like tags and the pockets, some ephemera included in the sheet the same sheet so I just go ahead, went ahead cut them out these are two envelopes some tags bookmarks those tags teardrop say shaped tags bookmarks so next step is to um, make three signatures for this journal and uh, besides the images included in this kit, I'm going to add some pages to the journal. I'm going to add these three sheets, which I created a while ago, add to this journal. These are really pretty. I used a lot of lace and the vintage images, Victorian style images to decorate these uh, spreadsheet. I also used wax seals. And I'm going to add some pages with pockets, ephemera page uh, paper, some old time. This is a uh, old magazine page, some tea dye paper. I already cut them to the size of this journal and some more tea dye papers. More ephemera like old almanac, cotton, farmer's almanac paper. Some special, special specialty made paper scraps, and some old notebook pages, some more ephemera. So next step, I'm going to create three signatures with all this paper. So I'm going to choose three images for the center of each signature. So I'm going to choose one, two, and the three. This I'm going to use for later on these two sheets. These two extra background pages I'm going to put aside. So the rest of the pages with the designs, I'm going to fold them in half. You can always hold fold a few pages a few sheets together and use bone fold folder to press press it down
So I have here a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should be six because this one is repeat repeated. So I'm gonna put this aside. So six um sheets makes um for 24 pages i'm going to add each uh, two of these designed papers to each signature so i'm going to start adding these pages i'm going to fold the center images in half as well I try to avoid the character's face in the middle so it won't damage the picture when I stitch on it. So I'm going to put center page first, three center pages, and then add two sheets divide these six uh, sheets into three signatures and then next um, I am going to add some ephemera pages which I already cut in the sides randomly place them add them to um, whichever signature you would like to add. So these are two tea dyed paper with design. I'm going to separate them. So as this one, I'm going to put the, this one here. Here are two sheets. Three sheets. So I'm going to add this page sheet over here. One, two, three. Add it over here. Three, one, two, one, two. So this one has three. That's okay. I'm going to put this beautiful design embellished sheets on each signature. So let's count how many pages we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I'm going to add one more page make each signature a 14 page signature 14 sheets signature One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have some paper here. Okay, always add this somewhere. Twelve. That is thirteen already. So just even out, evenly distribute. I try 
to distri distribute these pages evenly. You can distribute the pages whichever way you want, but I prefer every signature has the same amount of pages. That way the thickness is going to be the same. So these are the three signatures I prepared. Um, they are about the same thickness. I arranged them in a way of put the design the images in one is chosen for the cover of each each signature and the other one is going to be in the middle of this signature and then I add this beautiful page that I decorated before in the middle of it and then uh, add those tea dyed paper and the ephemera paper in between and put the center page in the center as in each signature. So this is the second signature. Ephemera page. These ephemera, ephemera pages are available on my shop, thegingerbreadprints.com. You can purchase them and use them whenever you need. Print them out over and over again so you don't have to get more uh, ephemera because you can use them, print, print them over and over again. That's the good thing about um, printables. You don't have to go out there and collect those ephemera you have them in your computer, ready to print and use. So these are three signatures I put together. So now next step is to start the binding. To start to bind these three signatures on the template that is provided on this journal kit. Put that binding, uh, binded signature in the middle later on after we finish. I add three sheets of background paper on the outside of each signature because I would use this uh, page to connect to the cover and the connect to the next signature. So the gap in between each two signatures is not gonna show. The gap on the spine is not gonna show because these two pages will uh, be glued together. So this, uh, for these uh, connection pages, let me call them. I print, I printed only on the one on one side, because the other side we will put glue on. It doesn't need to be uh, printed a pattern on. So let's continue to do the spine. This is the image for the spine, and this is the template template and this is the extra piece to glue on the back of the spine and uh, to give it more strength 
So I'm going to glue this piece to the back side of the spine and make sure it's centered. It's a little over half inch on this side and this side also. So I'm going to glue these two pieces together. and uh, let it dry completely before I proceed because I'm going to put the stitches on the spine. If it's wet, it's not gonna have uh, enough strength. While it's drying, I can mark the um, the holes that I'm going to sew the signatures on. I just eyeball it because it's very easy to see. Roughly measure it half inch and half inch. So I'm going to mark the holes on the spine. To do that, I'm going to use an awl to poke the holes through. I usually use a piece of wood on the bottom behind this for easy poking the holes. So these are the holes that we're going to stitch on. I'm going to use a pencil to mark the holes on the front side. Because there's a pattern printed on, it's hard, very hard to see. This is where the spine will be, and the uh, signature will be sewed on. So I will set this aside and let it dry completely. Our next step while this spine is drying, we can do, we can mark the signatures using the template. I already fold this template along the center line.
just place this template in the middle of each signature and then use a clamp to clamp the signatures pages together and then poke the holes use an awl I want to make the hole a little larger so later on it's easier to sew through. And before sewing, don't forget to remove this template. Since the spine is still drying, so we just set this aside, proceed to the next signature. Now we're doing the third one. Just try to press the all the pages together as much as you can. Now these three signatures are ready to be sewn onto the spine piece. Now it's still wet, so let's uh, wait until it's completely dry. Now this spine piece is completely dried. It's time to sew the signatures onto the spine. This is our first signature. To sew this on, I'm using a piece of uh, mm, thread, uh, waxed, because I waxed the thread using this piece of paraffin. You can buy already waxed thread, something like this. It's already waxed. So today I'm going to sew this on using the thread I waxed myself. So I start from the center hole, three signatures and sew the first one for, to start with the first, uh, the left side. Then come back from the the bottom hole. Oh, uh, I should start from the back side because I want to hide the thread. Where wherever you start start with, you're going to end up with so. 
I'm gonna start from the center yeah, on the back. Leave a couple of inches for time. And then come all the way to the top hole. Sometimes this hole can shift just a little bit. So we just need to Poke it again to find the right place to put our needle through. So make sure this piece is hanging out. and then come back out through the center hole. Pull it tight and then tie a knot. So this is our first signature. Now let's sew the second signature. Again, start from the back hole. Go through the middle hole. Then come to the bottom hole. Then come all the way up to the top. And then come back out from the center hole. Pull the thread tight. Make sure it's tight, it's tight here. And then tie a knot.
it doesn't seem like I have enough thread for the third one, but so this is the second signature. We put it on the spine already. So the third one, the thread is a little tight, but I'm going to try. So let's start from the middle hole here. Through the middle hole in the signature. Come to the bottom hole. And through the signature hole. Come all the way to the top. Oh, thread is not enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just connect a piece of thread. Use the paraffin to wax my thread. So now all three signatures are sewn on the spine. Now it's time to glue the uh, signatures to the spine on the outside cover like this. To glue this on, I'm going to use different glue because this glue is alcohol based. It's going to dry very fast and it's very strong. So I'm going to apply glue to the entire spine piece. I'm going to cut off the excess thread and then start applying this glue. This is uh, Beacon Advanced Craft Glue 3-in-1. This is my favorite glue. Make sure apply plenty of glue on the spine especially the holes because we need a very strong bound to the spine on the covers. And we also apply glue to the side tabs. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard to spread this glue out evenly because this alcohol based glue is not going to wash all off. So unless you use uh, alcohol, if you use a brush, it's going to stuck on the brush. So make sure the don't put it on upside down. Okay, so this is the right side.
press it down firmly using this bone folder. This doesn't take long to dry, so it's convenient to use this glue other than the water-based glue. This is the gap between two signatures. And apply a little more glue on the corner. Give it just a couple minutes, it will dry. So this glue is already dried. Now next step is to glue the front and the back cover on the inside to finish the uh, journal. So let me fold this in half. This side is going to attach the cover and this side is going to attach the uh, for this page on the back of this page on the first signature. So I am going to apply the alcohol based glue so it won't cause any wrinkles if you use water-based glue like the previous one, chances are the paper is going to warp, warp and the finish is not going to be very nice. Make sure to apply plenty of glue. I'm going to use this cardboard to spread out the glue. Make sure it cover all the edges. Make sure the edges are glued on, no gap. So now I'm going to glue the first page to this back side of this paper. spread out
smooth this out with the bone folder. Make sure it's all glued together. This white part, we can always trim it off. The finish is perfect. There's no wrinkle, no warp at all. This uh, paper to the back cover, the inside of the back cover and uh, glue it together with the last page of the uh, third signature. I'm gonna do this off the camera. I'll be back. I have glued all the pages, uh, all the front and back covers together and the uh, pages between the signatures. So the basic, the base of this journal is completed. Now let's flip through what we have done today. I add the title of this journal on the first page. Enchanting Visions, a journal of waterhouse inspired beauties. This is an old ledger page. This is tea dyed paper before I dye and put in the tea dyed tea, uh, tea stained water. I printed this image using my laser printer. If you use um, inkjet printer, is the image is not gonna stay. It's going to be. Um, messed up by the tea water. It's a beautiful page. Next step is going to uh, embellish the pages with with pockets, belly band, and flipped pockets and flip um, pages and all kinds of ephemera elements. So my next video is going to be decorating the journal. If you are interested, stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you will not miss out the uh, new video. I also recently launched my website, thegingerbreadprints.com. I listed all my most of my printables to my website and also have a blog which I will share ideas and new printable kits and shop discounts on my blog. And also there is a newsletter I send out on a regular basis. So please visit my website and subscribe to my newsletter and you will be informed 
of new ideas and new designs. Later, I will glue this side on, so this is going to be a pocket. Such a beautiful image, isn't it? This is a very old calendar. This is the back cover on the inside. So this is our journal and uh, I really enjoyed making it. And this is actually in an optional way to make it. Um, before I did not glue the uh, inside the cover to the first page of the journal. And today I'm trying to use this method to make the journal look more uh, neat and beautiful. And I truly love this result. This journal looks so neat and beautiful. You know, I um, usually put my journal like this with the other journals, show the spine on my bookshelf. So to be to be easy to get it, the journal in and out, <coughs> excuse me, I usually do not put lace and a, a lot of um, fabric and stuff to decorate the outside of the cover. Otherwise, it's not going to be easy to slide the journal in and out the bookshelf. But uh, if you, this is for myself, if you want to sell your journal, as a junk journal, then you can add lace and the decoration on the covers and it's up to you. So this is the basic of this journal made with this beautiful kit, Enchanting Visions, a journal of waterhouse inspired beauties. And you can make use this kit to make your journal any way you want by adding the ephemera, such as the pages I made before, and all the ledger pages and uh, other ephemera pages, like this is this page is from a very old Ford car mag magazine. Add pages such as this one and the other ones. I this is this is a page I believe is from a. A Victorian old Victorian book. I took the page out pages out and scan it, so I can use it um, in my journals over and over again. Don't have to tear up a book, and then uh, the page is gone. You will never find it again. <clears throat> so I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and stay with me to the end of this uh, video. Um, again, please visit on uh, the gingerbread prints. By the way, if you purchase anything from my website, you will earn uh, points because there is a loyalty program. After you accumulate an amount of points, you will use those points to purchase anything from my store for free. So it's a truly a great program. And uh, this program is not available on my Etsy shop because Etsy doesn't have this type of promotion. So please, I prefer you to purchase directly from my website and join this program. Again, thank you so much for watching and you all have a great day. See you next time. Bye bye.